Do you hear me? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so, um, thank you for inviting me to this, uh, this uh, seminar. Uh, my name is John Gullon. I'm uh, the Director for Operations and Logistics uh, at the Norwegian Polar Institute. I've been attending the Comnap Society for quite some years. I've been through uh, quite a few processes with uh, projects like this. Um, now I would like to uh, say something about Comnap. And, uh, and as standing here, I'm now uh, talking on behalf of Comnap and not the Institute. I don't know how much you know about Comnap. Some of you know quite much, I guess. Uh, but just go through the basics. It's an um, international association, which is formally recognized by the Antarctic Treaty Systems uh, as a practical, technical, and non-political association of national Antarctic programs. And like SCAR, has permanent observer status to the Antarctic Treaty meeting. Um, as we speak, we have 31 uh, one-member programs, uh, which represent uh, government entities responsible for the country's Antarctic polar bear strategies, and six, six uh, observer programs in, in its membership. And what is sort of our main objective for CONAP as such is to develop and promote best practice in managing the support of scientific research in Antarctica. It's, it's a, a bold and broad um, objective. However, uh, my personal feeling attending uh, this community for uh, a few decades is that we are able to do so. And, and a personal note to that is most of the program managers I know of them by first name. And so is with this community that you are representing. That, um, that community and that personal relationship between uh, key players is vital in order to facilitate uh, cooperation and such. Uh, just to mention a few examples uh, of international research partnerships is um, SUS, Southern Ob uh, Ocean Observing Systems, and the Year of Polar Prediction. We also advise the treaty and CEP on practical and technical matters. So, for just a month ago in, in uh, Berlin, in Germany, uh, Comnap uh, with the Secretariat was attending the meeting. And especially at, the, at this stage, we are focusing on uh, remotely piloted aircraft systems and waste managements and so on. Uh, so how do we work? Um, we are forming uh, different uh, groups that are working with different topics. We can see advancing critical technology, education, air operation, environmental protection, human biology, marine platform safety, and science facilitation. Uh, with all these expert groups are important uh, for the purpose of uh, the RINGS initiative, uh, perhaps advanced critical technology, air operations, marine platforms, and science facilitation is what is relevant for, for what we are discussing uh, the forthcoming days. Uh, advancing critical technologies was established largely as a result of the need to incorporate sustainable technologies into facilities and support of science. This group includes communication and data transfer solutions and system and response to the critical technologies identified by the COMNAP Antarctic Roadmap Challenge, ARC. I will talk more about RC uh, within a few slides. Air operations is, of course, fundamental to programs for operations and logistics and science support. 
And the air operations has been on a focus for coming up since uh, inception of the organization. And uh, looking to just a few years back, we were at the Institute personally involved in the Polar Gap. And Rene know that uh, project very well. So that's just an example. Uh, the marine platform expert groups recognize the important role by vessels play in uh, the southern oceans. And of course, uh, science facilitation. And here again, we are back to Antarctic roadmap challenge outcomes, which was uh, one of the uh, fundamentals to go into that uh, group. And I would like especially to point out the science community for big collaborative projects advanced within common up our understanding of the science reports and so on. Uh, furthermore, we are also working regionally. I mean, it's, it's a big continent, and we have five gateway cities feeding into the continent with air operations and uh, marine activity from uh, South America, uh, Punta, uh, Punta Arenas, and Ushaya, Christchurch, uh, Hobart, and of course, uh, Cape Town. Um, the uh, Pennsylvania is one of the regions, as we see it, where we see a natural uh, collaboration between uh, different national programs. And uh, also uh, Central Droning Modan and East Antarctica and uh, the Ross Sea region. And by discussing operational issues, and especially within search and rescue, for uh, quite a few years, we can see that there are some challenges in between regions in order to interact because the, the resources are sparse in, in, in some areas and it makes it challenging. However, uh, interaction between uh, regions is more and more relevant within CONDAP as well. And we're trying to bridge that, and especially within uh, science cooperation and, and search and rescue and other operational issues. And of course, from time to time, you would like to fly into the South Pole. I mean, the distance from the troll uh, station into the South Pole is 2,000 kilometers. It's a long flight. Um, so what about air uh, facilities? Um, there are a lot of uh, supporting elements within governmental science. It could be military operators and contractors. It could be uh, civilian contractors. And uh, we are now operating, or we say COMNAP, in all these about 70 different airfields. Some of them are uh, intercontinental, and some are just intracontinental skiways. The still, as you can see, is, is a lot of infrastructure, but in some areas, is, is very sparse. And uh, I was, uh, some years ago, we were discussing search and rescue between East and, and uh, Antarctica and Rodney Mode and realized it's, it's a long flight. It's different weather systems, a lack of fuel, of lack of uh, ground support. So that's something uh, we have to discuss when the day comes, when we have to, uh, are talking about how to interconnect the uh, um, different regions. Uh, you will find more about the uh, Antarctic uh, Station catalog. This uh, it's uh, available on the internet on the Comnap website. Um, I would like to point out the fact that Comnap as an organization does not endorse or lead research programs or projects. We can't do that. We are a loose entity with a lot of different national programs. So it boils down to, it, this has to go through the national programs, uh, which have their own procedures to identify and support research um, that contributes to the national Antarctic polar strategy. Therefore, 
any role that CONAP as an organization can play in these proposals such as RINGS can only be done so through the national Antarctic programs. However, what an organization, what CONAP can do, and has been done in the recent past, is to work with programs on other Antarctic organizations, such as SCAR, to develop and share high-level guidance and information on issues that are common concern for national Antarctic programs and the research communities, and to focus our expert groups and regional groups' discussions into that common issues. The Comnap Antarctic Roadmap Challenge uh, project, RC, was such a project. Um, RC recognized that research in the Antarctic requires substantial and sustained investment by governments to meet the challenges of conducting science in one of the most remote and extreme environments on the Earth. Um, and thinking back, the first workshop we had on the RC was, in fact, in Tromsø. Uh, quite some years back, sorry, did I? And uh, just looking at my notes here, we had a workshop in Tromsø, 22nd and 24th August in 2015. And if you were to describe uh, our project that we would like to see coming into our C concept and the way of thinking, I think uh, rings is meet the requirements quite well. Uh, and this is actually, sorry, a picture from that meeting in Tromsø, where RSE started out. Uh, and my personal reflection on this, I'm jumping out of the manuscript now, but being a part of fostering platforms for science through decades in the high Arctic and Antarctic, is that if you can combine all good resources, all the good environment, all the good players, in the conceptual stage, I think the chance of success is quite good. Of course, science should drive logistic and not the other way around, but still, by incorporating operational logistics in, in, in an early conceptual stage, I think there will be windows of opportunity, uh, other things that can be taken into the equation much earlier. And I think that uh, it's really beneficial to, to play it back and forth. Um, and I'm happy that uh, Comnap is involved into this. We have already been reporting on this meeting to the Comnap Society we, uh, for a meeting some weeks ago. And we still like to do that. And uh, also, XCOM in Comnap have an annual meeting with the XCOM in SCAR. So there are interlinks and uh, coordination and cooperation the whole way. I hope this can give you some food for thought, at least, some reflection around how to, to bring in the broader community to this. And uh, I believe that CONAP is uh, not the key element to make this successful, uh, but it's one of the elements that this uh, concept must be based upon in order to make it uh, uh, vital and and, uh, and prominent in the future. And of course, on the other ideal uh, would be to have a big project going in with all resources and do this within one year or two. You might not be able to do that, but by having a conceptual governing of the whole thing, the regions, the resources can bring in when it fits into the national programs. And I'm quite confident that Comnap can play its role and, and uh, foster for that cooperation. So that was my message. Thank you. <laughs>